clips tonight that I looked up and saw were Clinton cover up and the fix was in. Conservative media are running with the story of text messages at the FBI as part of a conspiracy theory of sorts surrounding the existence of the so-called deep state and a secret society within the Justice Department that was out to get Donald Trump before the election that he won and remains out to get him now that he's president. It now dominates a lot of the primetime programming on Fox News and elsewhere. It may be time to declare war outright against the deep state and clear out the rot in the upper levels of the FBI and the Justice Department. Yes, I said the rot. The FBI and the DOJ have broken the public trust by destroying evidence, defying oversight, and actively trying to bring down the Trump presidency. I'm not surprised there's a secret society within the establishment. That was designed to get rid of Trump, to deny Trump the election. We were never supposed to know any of this. There needs to be serious ramifications if we're going to save our country in all of this. People must be held accountable. They must be investigated. They must be indicted and probably many of them thrown in jail. In an article published today for the Washington Post titled Your Guide to the Anti-FBI Conspiracy Theories Rippling Through Conservative Media, author Philip Bump deconstructs this effort to, quote, defend Trump by arguing that it's actually the president who is the victim of a conspiracy and whipping up whatever evidence is at hand to bolster that claim. Philip Bump, national correspondent for the Washington Post, is with us here tonight, as is Charlie Sykes, longtime conservative radio host, author of How the Right Lost Its Mind, and an MSNBC contributor. Uh, gentlemen, welcome to you both. Mr. Bump, if that's who you claim to be, walk our audience through these two stories, one of which over the release of a memo, loosely, the other right. over these text messages at the FBI. Right. So it's sort of hard to walk through these quickly simply because they are by their very nature built out to be very intricate because that is the that is the way in which they are me meant to uh, appear more trustworthy because they have all these different components and all these different actors, uh, most of which are tangential and or uh, not really particularly revelatory. All of that throat clearing out of the way. Uh, the memo is a memo that was written by staff members for a, a, a Republican uh, member of Congress named Devin Nunez. People may remember him. He was also one of the leading voices defending Donald Trump after the infamous the Trump Tower was wiretapped tweet. Uh, Devin Nunez stepped up and actually had to recuse himself from Russian investigations because of his uh, the interactions with the White House. Uh, so Nunez's staff wrote this memo. And essentially what it is, is that it is a, uh, according to those who've seen it, not many people have seen it. I'll, I'll of Congress. Uh, it is a sort of a cherry-picked uh, assessment of ways in which the, the process for getting a surveillance warrant uh, was compromised. Uh, and it's not really clear what that involves, but Democrats who have seen this and who are privy to the intelligence that it is theoretically based on say it is basically out of hand that it's, it is either nonsense or, or just a sort of a, a partisan list that is meant to, to sort of stir up emotions. Uh, the Department of Justice has not seen it. They have not even had a chance to respond to this memo uh, and actually just sent a letter to Nunez uh, uh, today, I believe it was, that called it reckless to consider even releasing this public without the Department of Justice having a chance to see it and essentially saying that they've seen no evidence that the surveillance warrant process uh, was problematic. So that's the memo. Then there are these text messages. People may remember there was an FBI agent named Peter uh, uh, Struck, I forget how to say his name, but I apologize, uh, who had been carrying on a relationship with uh, a woman named Lisa Page, who also worked with the FBI. And they had text messages back and forth over the course of the campaign. Uh, and uh, while doing that, they had made some disparaging comments about uh, President Trump before here's the president. But what's at heart, what, the, what really sort of brought this back to the forefront this week is it was discovered that because of a bug, the FBI says that they had given out new phones, Samsung 5s, and they hadn't uh, set them up properly. And so the text messages between them weren't captured for a period from December until May, actually right at the point at which uh, Robert Mueller was appointed special counsel. And so it's these missing text messages that have sort of uh, become an out, outsized sense of this is something that is a, is a question and a conspiracy. And then there's this one text message that came out and it was just reported by ABC News that, that it was about uh, just mentioned sort of tangentially a secret society. And then this was sort of built up on its own tangent into being a big thing. So it is, it's a lot of little things 
things that are blown up and sort of pieced together uh, to make a web that so far doesn't really seem to reveal very much. So, Charlie, here's where you come in. This mention of a secret society, we don't know if it was serious okay. or in jest the way uh, people do on text messages, right. um, was just enough for a fellow Wisconsinite of yours, Republican Senator Ron Johnson, to go on Fox News and build on this notion of secret society. We'll play what he originally said. We'll play him being questioned about it and coming back from the tips of his skis. Here it is. And that secret society, we, we, have, we have an informant that's talking about a, a group that were holding secret meetings off-site. There is, there's so much smoke here, there's so much Boy, suspicion. Let's, let's stop there. A secret society, the, a secret meetings off-site of the Justice Department. Correct. What, and you have an informant saying that. Yes. Senator, do you, do you really believe that there's a secret society within the FBI trying to take down the president? Listen, no, all, all I said is when I, I read those in those texts, that's, that's Strzok and Page's term. So, uh, Charlie, it's, it's been said, and I think you said to one of our producers, he's a better man right. than this incident. Well, that, that, that's what's so heartbreaking and disappointing about this, because Ron Johnson is a conservative, level-headed, kind of wonky kind of guy. And this is an indication of just how frantic um, the efforts to discredit um, and delegitimize this investigation have become. I mean, the, the fever swamps are overflowing right now. I mean, there's a long tradition of, um, of trafficking conspiracy theories, you know, the paranoid strain in American politics, you know, and I talked about it. I mean, you know, from, from Infowars to the Drudge Report to used to be on Sean Hannity. And now you're seeing, you know, a otherwise reasonable Republicans who are deciding to have a bonfire of their reputations by coming out and trafficking. And as, you know, Philip Bump lays it out very, very clearly. I mean, you're, you're talking about unsubstantiated rumors, urban legends, uh, text messages that might make jokes. And they're trying with all the heavy breathing to turn this into uh, the deep state secret societies. The problem with this is, is that is that not only is the is the you know, political agenda obvious, but there's a real price to be paid in attacking the FBI, in, in demeaning the FBI, in attacking and delegitimizing the intelligence agencies of this country before we know what Robert Mueller comes up with. Because, I mean, look, we, we, you know, this should not be a partisan issue. You know, you know the, the Ron Johnson that I knew would have thought that, that a Russian attack on our democracy was, you know, a, a massively important thing. So I think it, it's, it's an indication of just how hysterical it's become that guys like, uh, like, like my home state's senior senator is... Uh, has